the simplicity of the gospel. Only when we allow him to be magnified. How shall I know these things? Zacharias was looking through the situation with naked eyes. With naked eyes. He forgot to put on his spectacles. He forgot to put on his magnifying glasses. He was looking with naked eyes. So he began to doubt. I am old and my wife also is old. And the angel answering said unto him in verse 19. He said, I am Gabriel. That stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent forth to speak unto you. I read this morning for myself, Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And I read all those things that God has anointed me to do. And God has anointed me to speak unto you and to speak into your life. Do not do like Zacharias. Don't do like him. I won't do what the angel did here. But I'm challenging you not to be like Zacharias and doubt. And the angel said, I am Gabriel. I have been sent forth to give you a word. And to show you these glad tidings. And verse 20, it says, and behold, thou shalt be dumb you see where doubt leads you see where unbelief leads it wasn't settled in Zacharias's heart that the God whom he was praying to every single day was able to give them a son so doubt set in and the doubt became began to manifest by him speaking it out of his lips like we do today, we speak it with our lips. And then the angel said to him, you're going to be dumb. Because you did not believe my words, which shall be fulfilled in your season. You're going to be dumb. And you're not going to speak. Because I brought you a word straight from God and you did not believe it. My question is, how many words have been spoken forth from this pulpit that you have not believed? Check your life and see if you have become, quote unquote, dumb in any areas. Not dumb as in a Bajan, dumb, stupid. But certain things taken away from you because of your unbelief, because of your doubt. He says you're going to be dumb and you won't be able to speak because you did not believe the word that was given to you. You didn't believe it. But these words shall be fulfilled in their season. How many times have you looked back on your life and see the areas where you doubted God, but God still fulfilled what he said? He's faithful. He is faithful. He's faithful. I don't know, but I want to encourage the married people. I want to encourage you. Because I've come to understand Satan's tactics and strategies when it comes especially to marriage. Every single thing that God has designed, Satan hates with a passionate hatred. 
And marriage is one of those things that God has ordained. So therefore, Satan tries to weave his way in. Break up and destroy marriages. If yours is at that point where it is broken, where you see it beyond repair, if you could only believe in your heart that God is able to restore it, you'll have it. You'll have it. You'll have it. It has to start here. It has to be manifest on the inside here. And you'll have it. I serve a God that is awesome. I serve a God that is wonderful. I serve a God that is faithful. I serve a God that is true. He's true. He's true. Don't reject what God says to you. Don't reject. And as I said before, if you have to do like the man in Mark chapter 9 and cry out to God and say, God, I believe, but help thou my unbelief, do it. Get into your closet and cry out to him and say, God, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. There is sickness in my body. I believe that you are the Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. But help me in my unbelief, oh God, because the pain is unbearable. The pain is unbearable. And every time I go to the doctor, the report is not better. Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Jesus said, except they see signs and wonders, they won't believe. The world is waiting and depending on us to see those signs and to see those wonders at work. Help thou my unbelief. When you find yourself up upon us against a spiritual fight, You've got to develop a stamina to continue advancing forward. A stamina that brings you to the place where you say no retreat and no surrender. It brings you to the place where you truly believe what God says in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. You got to believe. For I give you power. To tread upon the serpents and to tread upon the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Not some. All. I give you power and authority to tread upon the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Power is what he has given us. You better believe that you have it and start acting on it. In the name of Jesus. And start to see those demons flee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I just love the Lord. God didn't leave us stranded, you know. He didn't leave us stranded, you know. He has given us every single thing that we need. Everything that we need. I give you power to tread upon the serpents and the scorpions and over all the works of the enemy and nothing, nothing, shall by any means hurt you. So when the enemy continues to advance, you continue to go forward and look the enemy straight in the face like flint. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What I would like to see is the church, not just this church, Pegwell, 
but the church, the body of believers beginning to function like true believers. And when I say that, I mean understanding the power and the authority that is given unto you as a believer. Begin to function like believers. The world should not look at us and try to determine whether or not we are believers or not. The world should be looking at us and trying to determine if we are on their side or God's side. Which side? Because we talk too much like them. We walk too much like them. We do everything like the world. Everything like the world. So we don't stand out. We got to start standing out. Matthew chapter 18. Verse 19 and 20. It says again I say unto you. That if two of you shall agree on earth. As touching anything that they shall ask. You see these wonderful things that are written in God's word. These things are wonderful. If any two of you shall agree, touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And where God is, something must happen. So you know that, what that tells me? Whenever I walk into this place and I know that I am coming in the name of the Lord and I believe that you are coming and you and you and you and you and you are coming in the name of the Lord, something must take place in this place because God's presence is here. Something must happen. But we can't only see it with our mouths. We must believe it in our hearts. And whenever we come, we must expect to see the glory and power of God revealed and released in the sanctuary. Because where the twos and threes are gathered together in his name, he is there in the midst. So somebody must walk out healed. Somebody must walk out delivered. Somebody must walk out encouraged. Somebody must walk out inspired. Somebody must walk out with that spirit of heaviness broken and shackled off their life. Something good must happen. And if nothing is happening, then we got to ask ourselves some questions because it ain't God at all. It's not God that is in the error. Can't be God. Can't be. So like, like me, I want that whenever you walk into these doors and you know that you are coming in the name of the Lord, come expecting to see the glory of God revealed in the sanctuary. Come expecting God to do something in you and through you. So ladies, when you're coming with your heels, expect that at some point in time, the spirit of God might hold you and the heels might come off your feet and you start to dance and rejoice and hop and skip. Men, expect that when the Holy Ghost begins to minister, you begin to lift your hands and speak in tongues as the Lord gives utterance. No more hiding behind the scenes, but stepping forward in boldness because we believe what we say we believe we believe and for those who are yet to come under the fold of Christ Romans chapter 10 it says reading from verse 9 it says if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart. You see, the mouth and the heart got to work together. You can't just walk about 
and just spew things out of your mouth, but you don't believe it in your heart. The mouth and the heart has to work together. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's made unto salvation. We got to let it settle in the heart. It must be settled in the heart. And I pray that you have received something today that you have been challenged. And as you go from here today, you will always check what's in the heart and ask yourself, do I believe what I'm saying? And if it comes from God's word and there is some doubt that you don't truly believe it, fix that heart and allow that heart to truly believe because with God, all things are possible. The simplicity of the gospel.